I would like to welcome oh. Donna Parker to Life with the Lionesses for Women in Rugby League to um, these interviews uh, linking the Lionesses and all the tours. And Donna Parker, a legend in Hull and a legend in Rugby League, uh, who was on the 1996 tour, played for Hull Vixens, uh, but also, interestingly, did a lot of the Lancashire, played for Yorkshire uh, in the Lancashire County Games in the 1980s and 1990s. And the uh, notorious Wildcats um, was very involved with those as well. So welcome, Donna. Hello, Julia. Hiya. So first of all, let's start. How did you get involved in rugby league then? Uh, well, to be fair, obviously, um, I, in, in my days, it was, it was football. That's all it was. Um, and I was messing about in, in the streets with a couple of lads said, hey, Donna, do you like to play football? I said, yeah, I'll give it a go. Anyway, I popped along and I ended up playing five aside and then I ended up playing 11 aside for the Ricketts women's team. And then I played for that for about four years. And then I saw an advert in our local paper, which was Hull Daily Mail, Women's Rugby League. I thought, oh, I'm going to give it a go, yeah. Anyway, there was this night and we went up to Costello Stadium I walked into the car park and all of a sudden was about 25 women. I thought, oh my word, this is this is not this is for real. People must love rugby league here. And it was a, a woman called Anne Thompson who was arranging it. And we was all saying, oh yeah, let's have a go. And we all stepped in and we met up for the next on a Tuesday. And, and, and we started from there. So were you one of the first ones that started with the Hull Vixens then, that first training night? Yes, I was. And I was, um, I, we got eventually training session and we couldn't run around the pitch for about five minutes when we started. <laughs> Everybody's thinking, oh, we're going to have an heart attack here. But we know we kept pushing and pushing and eventually we got there. We did our little fitness tests as you do. And then we went from there and then we carried on when we ended up getting into the league. Well, our league was on a nine aside them days. And then some of the women said, gee, I can't play nine aside. I said, of course you can. Anyway, Ann Thompson picked our team and I was privileged to be the old Vixen's captain. Oh, fantastic. And along with other people, I was like um, vice captain and then we had a club captain and we went from that. And then eventually we had a few more games and then we up to up to up to eleven aside, which was even better. Anyway, a year later we went to thirteen, and we said, "Wow, this is amazing!" Thirteen from the nine aside, it was totally totally different. And you really found your own actually when you were playing thirteen aside, weren't you? Because you you were a, you're a playmaker, aren't you? For those that that don't know you, Donna, and absolutely one of the the strongest kickers I've ever known in the sport. Yeah, and to be fair, I mean, obviously, I, I love rugby league, and I follow my team, which is LFC. And look at your hockey, yeah, but hey, oh. <laughs> can't have it all, can we? <laughs> no, and then and I just I just watched and watched, and and I had the privilege to to be the, the Vixens' captain. Yeah, and, yeah, and obviously it stemmed from there. Yeah, absolutely. As I say, your, your kicking game was 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 one of the best things about your game as well, wasn't it? And and actually, in those days, uh, you know, women because women hadn't been brought up with rugby league, the kicking game wasn't very strong in the league, was it? But um, you were able to be really versatile with it. Yeah, it was. And then to be fair, I think it helped me playing football as well. Um, yeah. I was a right footer, not a left footer, so that was a a, a good thing as well. So. But yeah, it, yeah, I, I very, very enjoyed it. Yeah. So, how old were you when you started playing then? Yeah, uh, I think I was. Uh, I must have been about in my twenties when I started, and I played for about fifteen years. And still playing now in your masters I'm still, team. I'm still playing now. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of the the many masters that are beginning to spring up in women's rugby league. Which Definitely. So. Tell us a bit about county rugby then. I, I want to talk about the pathway because some women were really involved in county in these interviews, but others weren't. But really your experience, can you remember sort of that first call up when you were starting to play for Yorkshire and, and your pathway into great Yeah, rugby? Um, obviously well, our coach had to pick five players that, because there was a fair few teams, which is fair enough. And that, five of us went down and went up to, um, I think it was up at uh, Castleford up, up at, at the rugby union ground and that. And there was quite a lot of get, uh, women there. And obviously, I knew a few of them through playing against them. 
and we, we just played a game and went on the skills and whatnot. Anyway, a week later, I got called up to say you were success, successful to play for the York and I thought, oh, that is great, that. You know, and, so, and there was an, an, another a person, with me, which was Andy Shearsmith, she got pulled in, but she had to pull up because she was in the army. Mm. Which was, oh, I remember that, yeah. It was it was unlucky for her to be fair, but I was privileged, you know, to play for Yorkshire. I thought, wow, this is a step yeah. forward here for the first time I've ever played for a Yorkshire team. Yeah, who was the coach at the time then? Yeah, uh, I think it was um I want to say John Joyner. Oh wow, really? Yeah. And it would yeah. have been maybe in Castleford, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was it was at Cass, yeah. And then obviously um there was Lee Crooks coming the next time, there was Carl Sanderson. And there was a fair few, which was quite good. Yeah, so how many games did you play for Yorkshire? Yeah, I think I played about four or five games. Because mm. there weren't that many, was it? Once no, it got one. to after 2003, Yorkshire, because no, she's finished, no. didn't it? Yeah, can you remember any, who, can you, did you play, did you just play Lancashire or did you play Cumbria as well? We, we just played, I think, I think to be fair, I think we just, yeah, Lancashire we played. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which was so, a shame if they did. I, I can't, can't remember if Cumbria had a team. Uh, there was one fixture that I saw that Cumbria were involved with. Uh, obviously, yeah, there yeah. was quite a big Barrow team, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you've played for your uh, county, proud, thinking, wow, this is absolutely brilliant. Tell us about your, your call up for Great Britain. Well, call up for Great Britain was a Benz. Um, obviously, we had to go down for trials. And we went on to like point systems and whatnot. And we said, they said, oh, you'll get a letter for the post. Anyway, in between that, I was still playing for Vixens, still training. One of the women said, have you got a letter yet? I said, no, oh, no, not yet. I said, it was supposed to be coming out sometime. So anyway, with that, I got home and my mum said, oh, Donna, there's a letter here. I said, oh, yeah. anyway, I opened it and I went, I read it and I went, well, I just, I just burst out. I went, I can't believe it, mum. What's the matter? What's the matter? And I've got I've got picked in for the thirty two of us going to uh, for Great Britain for the tour in Australia. She went, wow, and that was it. Anyway, oh, wow. I, I, next day I toddled off to work, and I come home. There was um, I had cards, you know, and people congratulating me, people at work, and it was it was just phenomenal that people was really really pleased to say. You know, you, you've worked hard and you've done it. And as I said, it ain't finished yet. I said, this is on the beginning. <laughs> uh, it makes me want to cry the way you're talking about it. How brilliant is that? Yeah, and how it supportive was, it was the great. whole community. Yeah, it was great. And yeah. obviously, we, obviously my, my family, my friends, there was absolutely buzzing for me. Yeah, yeah. So what was the training like then? And the, Obviously, we all had to meet up. Um, I think it was somewhere in Barnsley, up that way, our first one. And they give us out, we had like a nutrition and we had like to fill out forms each each week. We had to do um, regular exercises, fill out, go to a gym. So, and that was it for the last, we had to do it for 18 months. And it, it, it was hard, but I thought, no, I need to, we're, we're doing it. We're going to do it, we're doing it. So for the last, like, 18 months, it was horrendous. I, I, I liked my beer, and I stayed off my beer. I said, no, I, I'm going to Australia, and that's it. And we, obviously, we had to promote it as well. And that was, that was really hard. You know, Tell us a bit more about that, then. What do you mean by promote it? And well, obviously... Um, we had to go, like, obviously go out and say, what do you want to do? Obviously, we had to get, like, the sponsors and whatnot. Right. And, um, a whole whole lot of money. And, obviously, it it, it didn't really help because there was three of us from Hull, but we all stuck together. And there was the people in the community really, really did help us, um, along with where I worked at, where I worked at Bed's Eye. I got some sponsorship off them, which was lucky. And the, the people that out there, they did um, bus stops for us. We did sponsors galore. We did, like just walked over on the bridge just to get the money. I mean, the bucket collection was embarrassing, really, but we it was fun, you know, just checking a bucket in front of people. You know, get, give us some money. Out will do for us. You know, we, <laughs> we, want, we need to raise this money. And... Um, 
and it was it was hard work but it was well worth it in the end yeah, yeah absolutely so you raised all that money you did all that training to get there so you what was it like then um going on your first tour well obviously when we was we sat on the plane we think gee we're, we're going to australia we just, i just could not believe it i mean to be fair it's like i, I, I was there in 92 i went out there in 92 and I thought, I'd never believed that I'm going again to Australia in 96, and especially playing from the country. And, and obviously, we, we flew into Sydney. The majority of the lasses was, was in an hotel or in an apartment. The majority of them should have been going to a little uh, pre presentation, and a couple of them were jet lagged, so they missed out. But obviously, the next day, we, we all had to like, up and running. We had our breakfast, and we had to start training, and, and that and that was it. We started stem from there. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't your first time in Australia, but what was no, it, it like as going time, as a no. what was it like going as a player? Well, it, it was absolute. I was absolutely buzzing, and especially you, you, you go in there and you are you are playing for your home country, and you are you've got that shirt on which is yours, and you're not you're not present you're not getting. An extra baller um, from the Great Britain men's team. It's the women's team, which was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're on tour then, and you're doing all the training and the games and things like that. So what was it? What was it? What what got on? What got went on on and off the field? Tell us a bit more. Dish the dirt, Donna. <laughs> well, <laughs> my motto is: what goes on tour stays on tour, and it has to be done. <laughs> 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 Quite right no, as well. <laughs> no, we, we, obviously we still had to train. I mean, we, we had seven games and three test matches. Um, Brisbane, uh, Sydney was good. Um, obviously, we had a, a 13 presenting side and, and then obviously a test game. But unfortunately, I, I wasn't pitching the test. I was, I was, I was still happy that I was in the 13 president team. Um, and I was happy as well. I scored a few tries, and and then obviously we we had our little um our little couple of hours off, and we're just like obviously you 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 had to visit the opera house and do what what, and people said to me, DP, where where the shall we go? Because I knew I'd been there in '92. I said, oh well, you need to, if you want to, you need to do this. You need to visit whatever you want to do. So obviously people toddled off and we just did what we wanted to do, you know, which we had a little bit of free time and we made the most of it. Mm. And, and and obviously we I visited the, the Australian Institute of Sport, which that was quite good, very good. And obviously I got some of the lasses to jump on the cap, on the, onto the cap, jet cap and toddle off to Manly for the day. And obviously after that, we had to come back, we was training because we had to have, so many games in so many like three weeks which was quite really tiring but we had to do it yeah yeah absolutely the, the long tours aren't they oh you all been together definitely long tours yeah it is yeah. To, like to cram everything all in yeah yeah absolutely so what's it like to tell us about that that last game that you won the you'd, you'd beaten the Australians you beat the Australians in the three test series and actually yeah. you're the last team to well uh, any any team was to a, have beaten the we, Australians we was all looking at the the clock and it's like this two minutes is is never ending it's not moving here and as soon as the referee blew that whistle well that was it everybody just ran onto that pitch. We just could not believe it that we won. The obviously it was we won and we won quite good. Obviously it should have been three 0 to be fair, but say no more. It was it was um, two one. I don't know what's going on here, Julie. Mm -hmm. And so and after that we said, "Hey, we've done it," you know, and everybody was jumping around and whatnot, and we were swap, swapping shirts. And the only sad thing, obviously, when we got presented, it was just a shield, you know, and I think there was all of us there and we thought we'd have got something else, you know, and they're saying, oh, well done, well, and, and that was it, just well done. It's like, hang on a minute, we've, we've just won the ashes here. 
So there was no medals or anything? Not that I've not, not that aware of, anyway. No, <laughs> no, no, I've no one's aware. mentioned them and I haven't found no, any no. of them. So. No. Yeah. And, and like I said, the only thing what we what we kept, obviously, is, um, well, I swapped one of my shirts and also I've still got one of my GB shirts, which I, I never part with that. And it, and that was it. And then obviously, after that, we had, obviously, we had to celebrate, as you do. And uh, next day, there was a couple of so heads, but we, we deserved it. Absolutely. And then obviously, next day, we'd have to travel back home to back to Great Britain. And it's like, I wonder while we're on this plane, is there going to be any social media? Because people said, oh, I bet there's going to be social media. We're the first women seen. Anyway, we landed and there was nothing. There was nothing whatsoever. It was like, is that it? Oh. I think there was a couple of parents there. I, I, I can't remember which parents was there. There was there, you know, cheering on. I thought that is just absolutely horrendous, you know. We've been out there for three weeks, and that's that's the only opportunity we got, and the publicity when we landed, and, and that was it. Just some some parents will come and cheer us, you know, to say well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And was there any other recognition from from the game? <clears throat> no, not that I'm what I was, what I was aware of, not at all. Yeah. Um, the only time we got recognition is um, obviously uh, we got invited to obviously to the Wembley. Uh, as a flag bearer, uh, well, I think it was advertising for Pearsall that day, not Women's Rugby League, because it was all in white. <laughs> and we, where you, you were waving flags, weren't you? We were wearing big flags, yes. And that's all <laughs> it was like. Everybody was in joggers, T-shirts, and it was absolutely boiling with a cap on. Nobody had a, a clue who we was. Nobody. Oh, wow. Wow. I'm so pleased things have changed now, Donna. Oh, de de definitely. Definitely. It's got definitely changed without a doubt. Yeah. 100%. So when, yeah. So when you look back, what, what do you think the most challenging thing was? The most challenging thing was, is obviously raising all that money. So everybody got on that plane. And, and the, the, um, the others is, I think, is... I would say you've got to be tough and you've got to be well disciplined and, and everybody, all, all the lasses was well disciplined and there was a, a great bunch of lasses and you could never ever wish for to this day. Everybody, we're all laughing and joking after like 25 years, we, we still have a, a little laugh, courtesy obviously Facebook or uh, little reunions. Yeah, yeah. So you see, you've got a real friendship group, haven't you? Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and still in touch with so many of them, not just yeah. from your um, international days, from your oh, no, playing no, days uh, as well. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, there's obviously there's people always say to me, oh, now then, obviously people there say, now then, dated Donna and all that. He's like, excuse me, <laughs> I'm <wasn't> bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was just a joker as a pack. He was, you know, he was he was a laughing, but that that was me, you know. You play for 90, 60 or 90 minutes while we played, uh, and it's rough and it's tough, but at the end of the day, you get showered, and you have, there's a pants at the end of the bar waiting for you. Yeah, absolutely. And we have a, we have a laugh. Yeah, I always remember you, Donna. You you were always the sociable one who knew so many from every all the clubs because you made that effort. Yeah. You know, you, know, you made that effort and, and got so many friends around the country that you're still in touch with now. Yeah, and like I said, is you, you've got to be sometimes got to be cruel to be kind, but in a nice way. Yeah. And I'll never ever, you know, forget all the other lasses who I've met, and to this day, without a doubt. Yeah. And so it's a what? Pleasure to be with them. So, so tell me, what's the most positive aspect of your international career? The most positive, obviously, it it, um, it was more disciplined, which is. That made me, um, it, it's made me more open because um, obviously I, I used to step back and, and obviously you're privileged that I'm talking to you now, Julia. Oh, <laughs> you know, you're just a star, Donna. <laughs> yeah, but it, 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 it was hard work and we, we dug deep and, and we got there. We got there at the end of the tunnel. 
Yeah. And when you look back that you are actually the last team, uh, men or women, to beat the Australians on their turf in a three you know, ma- match series. What does that make you feel about your achievements? Just, well, just it's, 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 it's just still 100%. And like some of them, people just say now, I still can't believe it. I mean, I spoke to some of my nephews a few weeks back and it, 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 it's only nine or 10. He said, Auntie, Donda, I said, yeah. He said, you have played? I said, yeah, I did. He said, no, you never. I said, I played for Great Britain. So I had to show him this old picture. He went, that's never you wanted on it. I said, it is. He went, wow, his face was a picture. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. really something to share and celebrate. Yeah, it, it, it is, definitely. And like now, obviously, you, you, yourself and the others are doing it and pushing it and pushing it and all this going on social media. And I'm passing that on to my family, like my nephews and nieces, and they're following now. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that's so I'm great. I'm trying to, to push them. for some of my nieces to start playing rugby league now. Oh, that'd be even better if we got that out of it, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's like, uh, I said, don't do football. I get to get playing rugby league now. Yeah. Got me out of all FC all Kiar now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what, what do you want to say to the next generation, this generation and the next generation about playing rugby league and, and, and looking at that pathway to international? Uh, de- definitely do it without a doubt and if you want if you want to achieve what i've achieved you you got to train hard work hard train hard and you'll go down and stay on the right foot path, foot path discipline and you'll you will get there at the end oh donna thank you it's been an absolute pleasure you are a legend in hull <laughs> and in the sport uh you always have been fun and so engaging with with individuals and teams and actually, you know, you are one of the, the lionesses that brought those ashes home. So thank you very much for sharing your memories. Thank you very much, Julia.